Hi guys, hello, welcome to Agile World Wellness. And today, again, we're talking about psychological safety and mistakes. So we all know we cannot be perfect and we fail from time to time. This is life and this is where Agile Mindset really helps because we do the increments, we do the sprints, we retro retrospect, we learn from our mistakes, from our failures in the in the next iteration we do it differently and we do it right this is a great philosophy and it's quite easy uh, when we read about it when we talk about it but in real life because of the societies we live in failing is not something nice and easy at all so for psychological safety what we need to do to do with you we need to uh, make it very bold that here in this team, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay not to be, you know, the ideal version of yourself, the end version which you you created on this planet during the life. It's okay here to really be human. It's okay here not to know everything. And that is why it makes some er errors or failures. And, you know, it's okay not to be okay. How to do it? First of all, by talking about it, by putting it into your culture, creating the DNA of your company or of your team, writing guidelines, manifestos, values, descriptions of your DNA, where it is written on paper, it's formalized that here we fail and we fail in order to learn. And the faster we fail, the better, because then we can learn better. And the more we fail, the better because then we learn even more. So talk about it, write it somewhere and uh, make it like the team spirit. But also uh, please mm, not only say it, by, but live it. So if you yourself, you fail, talk about it. The leaders who are the strongest leaders, they are the ones who can tell stories. They use the storytelling at full speed, but they can also tell the stories not only about success, but also the stories about their failures and about the most horrible moments in their career development in the past. And these leaders are charismatic, they are inspirational, and these are the leaders who generate trust and people follow them because they are real, because they are not fake, they are not pretending, they are not just perfect robots. They had mistakes, they realized them, they accepted the mistakes, they accepted themselves with the mistakes, they learned from that. They change their behaviors and attitudes and now they talk about it and they share their experience to prevent you maybe from doing these mistakes. So um, if you fail, talk about that. Talk about how you get out of that. What did you learn? How did you tackle the situation? Talking about uh, mistakes um, will stimulate other people to think that, hmm, wow, he's talking about the mistake. He's not just pretending he is Mr. Perfect. Most probably failing is okay. They're not just writing it in corporate blog, but look, a real person is sharing his failure experience. Also, your attitude to your mistake shouldn't be the one which is just punishing yourself and then, I don't know, uh, hitting yourself um, saying that how bad you are and how could you do it. It should be very proactive instead of wasting time for, you know, um, saying to yourself, how, how, how could you do that and how horrible you are? You can just retrospect and reflect on that. Why did it happen? What did I do in order for this to happen? Uh, what uh, was my condition? What was my state uh, when I uh, was doing that? And uh, right away, what could I do differently uh, in order for this not to happen? Uh, what could I do more? What could I do less? Uh, what I shouldn't do at all? And what should I have done? Just, you know, from different angles, analyze the situation and answer the most important question next time. What will I really do differently in order to prevent this failure from happening one more time in the future? And uh, if you tackle your failure, not as a problem, but a task and as an issue to analyze, 
that will give your brain the call to action and the mindset of learning from mistakes instead of judging yourself and being quite cruel to yourself and wasting energy for all this stuff. Uh, what else uh, you can do? If it's a mistake or a failure, but definitely not a success where um, all team members have been taking part, you do a retrospective and you analyze uh, what did work, what didn't work, uh, what could, uh, could uh, we change and do differently, what supported us, what were our blockers and stoppers. And again, with your rational mind, you analyze the situation and you create the action plan. What about uh, the mistakes? What else can we say? We can say that mistakes uh, also are resources. You can analyze your previous experiences and see what were the biggest failures and what happened after. And most probably it was a resource because it made you change something for the sake of the good. You made a mistake, you realized you are lacking knowledge and you got the education or get certified. You got a failure, you understood you need to work more with people and you invested more into communication and into establishing relationships. You did something wrong, you retrospected, and you understand you need to do something with a different attitude, and you worked on it. Always your mistakes as a resource, always uh, mistakes lead to some progress. Every crisis actually in the end ends up to a certain change. In most of the cases, you learn something for that, you get something from that, and you gain. So you can analyze the past failures, analyze what helped you to survive what helped you to keep going, because definitely you are here. Yes, you didn't give up. Analyze what was your resource, your support, what helped you to get over it. But also analyze um, from this perspective of resource, what did it give to you? What did you learn? What did you get? What did you gain? And this uh, retrospective of your previous experience may help you also uh, to, to go further and meet your failures and connect with your failures and, you know, go further, notwithstanding mistakes and things which are not perfect. This also applies to the team. You can also retrospect the past year, years and then brainstorm the ideas on how to help each other to overcome difficulties. So this is about fail-friendly environment, which directly impacts psychological safety. If you're doing something for the first time and you're, you know that you may fail because you never did it before, but you know that you won't be mm, punished and you won't be criticized for failing, there is a much bigger probability that you will do it right. And there were many psychological and neuropsychological experiments where the group of students uh, participated. And for example, one group, uh, they were being told that everything is fine. It's okay, you know, if it's not okay, if it's not perfect. In the other group, they were brainwashed for being, you know, punished, being bad, excluded, criticized for failing and with the same level of knowledge uh, you know what happened the groups who were afraid to fail they had more mistakes and their results were worse than the group where it was psychological safety and a failure friendly atmosphere there they showed much better results with the same initial level. So this is important. That is why please analyze your mistakes and celebrate your mistakes together with your team because they give you a fantastic opportunity to retrospect, test, learn, go and thrive. Thank you so much and have a great day. <music>